and it looks like should be live right now. I don't see anyone joining us so far, but welcome. Welcome to the Starkle Planetarium live stream. My name is Waylena, and I'm the producer here at the Starkle Planetarium. And this is my first day back after visiting a uh, family uh, last week out of state. And it was a really nice visit. It sure was, uh, but a little bit slow on getting back to things. So I kind of have a couple different things that I'm going to share. So let me go ahead and switch it to the calendar view. All right, so here's our calendar uh, for events that we have the rest of this month. So we do have matinees on Tuesday afternoons and uh, Thursday mornings um, through the next couple of weeks. And uh, the we hover over it there. So we have One World, One Sky, Big Bird's Adventure, and did an asteroid really kill the dinosaurs? So that's kind of fun. Um, Friday night, we have our regular public programs. And let me see, make sure I've got that right date. Sorry, I lose my place very easily now. <laughs> we have Summer Prairie Skies and Dawn of the Space Age at uh, 8. And um, next week, same schedule. Although it'll be a little interesting. We're supposed to finally get our new furniture, not in this area, but in the um, more public facing areas. And that's the offices. And that's, well, it's, it's been pushed a few times, but now it looks like it's going to be next week. So that's going to be a bit crazy. Uh, we do have some field trip shows scheduled that are coming and that's going to be kind of, kind of uh, interesting. What are those things about interesting times, right? Um, before I continue, something I keep forgetting to mention, uh, if you enjoy this, uh, either joining in live or joining in later to check out some of the topics, um, you go ahead and like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel, and that'll help us to continue making videos to get the word out. Uh, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, something that I've been wanting to show you, although... <laughs> I shouldn't show it to you yet because then you're going to turn away from the video to go play it. But it is, it's a fun game. And you know what? I'm going to wait before I show you the game uh, because the, the game is Roman Space Observer. And what it is, it's the Roman Space Telescope. And uh, the full title is the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. And this is the... Um, this is the space telescope mission that was um let me get the uh my notes up for it okay so this is the one that previously was called the wide field infrared survey telescope w first you'll see it as and uh, it's been it's been in the plans for well several years now i think the um approval for development now yes i'm reading off of the uh, frequently asked questions right now says uh, February 2016 it was approved for development and launch and it's scheduled to launch um, tentatively in 2026 so we're a way off but it's uh, it's pretty exciting because the main focus is going to be uh, on uh, dark energy dark matter um, exoplanets and some other uh, infrared um, astronomy and planet science topics. One of the really neat things is that um, they're going to not have proprietary period for the data. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with and seeing the results and being able to share them in the planetarium. Um, well, well, going up there, we'll see. We'll see if I'm still uh, ar ar around then um, or if I'm, you know, <laughs> retired. Uh, we have to look at those things on the horizon now. Um, in case you're wondering, I've been here at this planetarium since 2000. So this is my 23rd year that I'm in. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a long, interesting trip, shall we say. Um, so what am I going to talk about this? Uh, let me see. I'm showing the wrong things. Uh, let me get the... Oh, I had no idea I was showing the wrong things. This is what I wanted to be showing. 
that's all right. You just missed my notes flashing up on the screen and giving me a giving me a headache because it opened in Notepad instead of <laughs> instead of the uh, other tool that I've been using. So let me make sure that I have it on there. Excellent. Okay. So uh, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope and uh, the web page. It's very cool. And um, this is where you get the link to the game that I will mention. Um, but you can also, I'm um, going to, well, I've already loaded some of these. There we go. Um, so about uh, why the name uh, Nancy Grace Roman Telescope. So uh, Nancy Grace Roman, uh, you can find on the about page on here. And uh, she was... Well, she held a, a few roles uh, at NASA, but one of the biggest accomplishments was, or maybe most public accomplishments there, uh, was the being so important in getting the Hubble Space Telescope project approved in the first place. And so that's why some people um, referred to her as the mother of Hubble. So we um, certainly uh, would not have had the Hubble Space Telescope in the form that it was um, without uh, her efforts. And uh, so this space telescope, uh, W First, was renamed to the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. And... Uh, some of the other uh, cool things I really like this this is a link off of the main page and it shows you the um, the telescope you can have different views of it and then you can click on parts to see what they do and you can also see the completion status and what location it's uh, um, being worked on at that's just really cool go back to the views um, and then you can also look at the, the ground information. Yeah, this is so cool. You can get notes on it. So I do encourage you to check this out. And if you're really super interested in more information about um, how it's going to be used for science, um, this is following one of the links off of the uh, main page, but it takes you to a slightly different uh, website. And this is an area that's more for, um, really it's aimed more at the scientists, but it's wide open so you can check it out yourself. And I do encourage you to, um, even if it's not material that you understand, you might, you might pick up a little bit of the vocabulary or, hey, if you are, or if you've got someone in your family that is really nerding out on this stuff, it's great. Um, something I found really interesting was down here, these, this one. And this shows field of view for um, the near cam on the web and for two of the uh, cameras on the Hubble. And then it shows the field of view. These are all the pieces for the image that you get. And that's the, uh, so it's a wider field of view. This is more of a uh, survey camera, but the resolutions are comparable to those of uh, Hubble, but the weight is much less uh, for uh, for the, um, just the mechanics of it. Materials have come along so much in the time since uh, Hubble was developed. And it's pretty, pretty exciting, even though it's a, you know, a few years off. So here's what I would encourage you to check out if you really want to nerd out on the science goals. And that's the virtual lecture series. Um, and it shows the times for joining them live. But the recordings of the previous lectures are posted. And, you know, hey, if you've got some interest in robotics and engineering, you might want to know about the mechanical and thermal design of the uh, chronograph instrument that's uh, around it. Seriously, this is great stuff, and it's available for all of us to, to check out. We are living in an amazing time for learning about the processes of science. So certainly do check that out. Oh, by the way, um, I've got links ready to go that I'll be pasting into the uh, show notes right after this uh, posts uh, or what after right after we finish the uh, live stream. Um, 
So that's a fun one. Um, and yeah, we already did that. Uh, there is a mission from the European Space Agency called Euclid, which uh, covers some of the uh, some similar wavelengths and has similar goals. And there's a let me see. There we go. Um, an article uh, posted uh, a couple weeks ago showing how the uh, ESA's Euclid mission is going to, um, well, the Roman Space Telescope, they're going to complement each other in, um, in their goals, what they achieve. This is, this is going to be pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. And um, the Euclid mission, now the Roman Telescope is not uh, going to be launching until 2026, 27 at the latest, but um, the Euclid mission launched Oh goodness, I'm looking at a calendar right now that's off in the distance here about a week and a half ago. So um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. And there's a, a graphic that you'll see in that article showing the similarities and differences between the two uh, missions. So very, very exciting. Now I did promise I would show you this game. There we go. It should be showing up. Excellent. Okay. And I don't know that I have, I don't think I have the audio enabled on it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click play. Uh, this is a game. Um, I tried it this morning. I don't score as well on it as I did last year or year before when I first uh, discovered this, but it's still kind of fun. Um, you use the arrow keys on your keyboard and the space bar. And what you're doing is you're moving around um, a, uh, you remember the shape for the, um, all of the images taken together on the Roman Space Telescope. And let me see if my little arrow can point to it. This is the shape. So this is us, the player. And these are different objects. There's galaxies, there's exoplanets, there's rogue exoplanets, there's supernovas, um, there's just all these goofy things. And you move your move the camera around and hit the space bar to capture it. And then at the end of the time, uh, it shows you how many of every type of object that, that you got. Um, black holes are these little dark, uh, circles that are hard to see because well black holes are well they're kind of invisible holes but since no light's escaping in this case it'd be kind of black and the uh, color of space isn't really black but it kind of comes out that way in cameras and images so it's hard to see this even harder to see are um is I think it's the dark matter blobs that show up and what you see is the effect on the matter in the um, in the game. So let's go ahead and play. I'm hitting play. Uh, press one for English and um, here's those directions and space bar to start. All right, here we go. I don't know how well. Oh, well, I'm hearing them. I'm hearing the music, so I'm monitoring at least. Let's do it. Ooh, see how that galaxy got bigger? When they get bigger like that, it means that there's a dark matter blob. I'm trying to see if I can catch one over here. Nope, not going to happen. Occasionally, you'll see a uh, web telescope will go whizzing by. Music speeds up as the timer runs down. Not my best, uh, not my best efforts, but uh, let me see if I can. There we go. 
And so this was my score. It was horrible. Look at that, 141. And I captured a few galaxies. I didn't get any of the ones with, uh, I didn't get any of the supernovas. Um, got one of the rogue exoplanets. Didn't get any of the dark matter ones. Those are the ones where the uh, uh, galaxies or whatever passes between us and it just, uh, kind of uh, blobs up. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun. And then you press R to play again in the same tab. Uh, space bar brings up a new tab and gets you started all over again. So again, that is uh, the Roman Space Telescope. And here off the web page, you get the link to the uh, to the game, to the uh, uh, interactive telescope, checking out the features on there. And that's about it for what I was going to cover. Um, and again, the Euclid mission launched, um, I believe, July 1st, so it was about a week and a half ago. So lots of neat stuff going on in that realm. I'm going to switch us now to, let's see, yeah, Blender. Okay, so my favorite software, and anyone who knows me uh, that, well, not anybody that knows me, because a lot of my family would be like, what is she talking about? Um, you know, Blender is something in a kitchen, right? Um, so my favorite software is a 3D software called Blender. Can use it for 3D, 2D, all kinds of great stuff. And there was, just before I left on break, there was a, um, a new release. So it's the 3.6 release. And this is also a, um, a long-term support release. So folks that don't update with every, um, new feature set um, can stick to that and it's supported then for a long enough time that uh, if you have a project that needs that stability then um, you can stick with it now on the um, new features page for it there's a lot of stuff and the biggest news was of course simulation nodes and this goes under the geometry nodes uh, area and this lets you do things like looping and iterations and pulling in different kinds of data it's it's a little little goofy in how you set it up um but i'm really interested to see where this goes um blender still has um particle simulations in its particle system i haven't kept up on how that's going to be revised but you can kind of use geometry nodes and simulation nodes to do a lot of things that we would have used the particle systems uh, for before. Um, there have been a lot of tutorials made about uh, using the simulation nodes. And, uh, and, and part of that is because while a release for Blender is uh, being worked on, there are... Um, the daily builds of it are available to play with. The branches are available to play with. And by play with, I mean, you can download them and you can use them. And what you, uh, what you can do is, so if I go to the download page for Blender, if you just want the current uh, release, you would just click on this and you would get an installer. It detects whether you are using uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, but if you want to download a different version than what it auto detects, and I always do the different version, I always do the portable, and then I unzip it, copy the folder to um, a Blender folder that I have made, and that way I have several different versions of Blender um, available to me at any time. So I've got the most, you know, maybe the most recent that has some cutting edge new feature that they're working on, but it's really buggy. Um, the, I keep the most recent, um, more stable version. And there are a couple of things that I honestly will keep older, older, older versions around for because they might handle importing an older 3D model style um, better. And then I can export it to something that is handled um, to a format that's um, supported better uh, currently. So different reasons to have different versions, but if I just used an installer, oh, it would be, a, it, it just gets into being a mess because, you know, Windows has weird ways of where it puts things and yeah. Okay. So enough about that. But yeah, what you would do is download it. And I did download this earlier. Um, it'll pop up, you know, 
saying, hey, here's how you can support us um, with the, the development fund, um, but you don't have to do that. Um, it downloads it and um, I already have, like I said, I already have mine um, set up and ready to go. Um, you can also download the uh, demo files for these different uh, things. So there's um, a couple different simulation nodes, demos, and the one that's, uh, well, I'm going to show you this one because I have it uh, set up and ready to show. Maybe, maybe. I think I have a different one that's open and ready to go, but I'll certainly still open that one. So in the geometry nodes, you've got this uh, uh, simulation zone where you got the the inputs and the outputs or the uh, gazintas and come out come out as that's what uh, I used to talk about when connecting uh, different uh, electronic things um, and it's they're great the tutorials I'm going to show a few of them and once you run the simulation you can then you know it might take a moment to like think about things as it goes through you can then bake the simulation so that all of those calculations are stored and it'll run more smoothly later on. And that's great if you're setting up something, but you want to play with the textures and the materials and the lighting later. So you won't have to um, regenerate all of that. Um, let me see. So yes, a link to the manual segment on it and then more uh, demonstration files that you can download the oh yeah the jiggly pudding is kind of cute <laughs> okay so you download you would click to download on that and it just uh well just like I showed you um so there's um and I'm gonna include a link to this this is actually off of the um, Blender website also. And this is uh, from the Blender Studio showing, uh, just talking about and some of the different features for using the simulation nodes. Um, there's a tutorial that I followed and I made this, I did right before I left. I made a slime mold and that's what I'm gonna show next here in my Blender. I've got it set up, I've already, um, so. The tutorial that I followed brought me through setting up all of these pieces and parts that you see over here. Um, just all of them. We've got the uh, um, initialization, all of this. We set up step by step, just paused it if it took me a moment to type something up, which it, it takes me longer these days to type them up, but um, it still was really... <laughs> I hadn't been using Blender much lately and it was a really good feeling to make something, even though it was just following a tutorial. Um, it takes you through the, all of the pieces and parts that are in the simulation and the, the node groups and um, oh, just so cool. And then once you have it set up down the timeline, you run it. And then it, it just plays after that because it does does the calculation. I thought, wow, that is so cool. And let me bring up the tutorial again for that. So um, yes, I did not make the tutorial. I followed the tutorial. Yes, yes. Um, really, really fun uh, to do. And I, I learned, I learned a lot. I might step through it again at some point um, to refresh my memory on it. Um, just, oh, very good stuff. Now, if this kind of whets your appetite for using uh, Blender to make sciencey kind of uh, um, videos or models or graphics, there are a couple of really neat um, channels. And the first one here I'm going to show is CG Figures. And um, there's recently released Blender in Science Episode 4. I was watching it a little bit uh, this morning. Oh, I'll be honest, I was listening to it a little bit. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and, 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 and check that out uh, again later and tell folks about it. Um, you don't have to watch the previous episodes, but in the playlists, you'll find Blender in Science. And that's where you can view the full playlist. 
So again, that's CG figures and I've got the links ready to post for that. Um, I'll try and sh I'll try and show some more of the um, blender sciency kind of uh, uh, stuff late in a later uh, broadcast of the live stream. Um, I also wanted to mention CG Python. So Blender lets you use Python to extend some of the features and it's very cool, very fun. And it's a great way to learn Python and programming in Blender at the same time. And there's, there's just some wonderfully fun, fun things that you can do with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you have the links to that. And where is, let me bring Blender back up. Let me make sure that I have my file saved and I'm going to open basic particle simulation. And this is the uh, demo file from the, <clears throat> excuse me, from the Blender webpage. And um, there's the link to the video in the, so when you open it, this is, uh, this is the default setting and uh, gives you the instructions. So you can adjust the modifier settings, move the attraction empty object, which is right here. And I selected it by clicking on it in the 3D view, but I could also select it in the outliner, which is right above me up there. <laughs> um, so with it positioned as it is, I'm going to run it and here we go. In fact, I should go ahead and let it run the whole way through. Okay, okay, very good, very good. And let me move this to trying to see if it would show me the uh, the frames on it. Maybe not. All right, I'm gonna go back to the regular, regular timeline. Okay, uh, so as I sweep along, notice that those particles and they're points, they're not really particles. I should, <laughs> I should be more careful in how I say that. Okay, I've just changed the view a little bit. So I'm scrubbing along the timeline and we have gravity is pulling the uh, points down. We have the ones closest to the attraction uh, object, which is an, an empty object. It's doing nothing but sitting there attracting these uh, points. They come up and kind of swirl around before gravity takes over. The shading is I don't even know if this is going to, yeah, I don't really have a camera view on there because I don't have a camera in this scene. Uh, the shading is determined. Let me get the shading. Well, let me change it to, we don't have shading nodes open in here. Let me open shading. Yes, so. Oh, I think they're set up in the, they're set up in the simulation itself. Never mind. that's me being silly. I'm not used to doing it that way, but this is, here we go. So it's actually setting the color um, probably based on, let's see, based on uh, velocity, value. Yeah, I'm not really sure if it's time from when they're released or if it's um, their velocity, but uh, there's the simulation settings are determining the color range going from this deep dark blue all the way up through this green into a greenish yellow there. Very, very cool. Um, let's go look at these modifier settings that we have. So as we open it up, we get the modifier is open and we can change gravity. We can change the attraction strength. So let me set it back to the beginning and let's make the strength 100. Oops. There we go. And oops, I am running out of time. There we go. 
it goes through a lot faster before it uh, before they start to fall. And if I scrub through, let me just scrub through. There we go. That's really cool right there. A lot of neat things that you can do with it. Uh, so definitely check it out, Blender 3.6, and download the um, the demo files. Check out some tutorials on YouTube, and um, I hope you hope you have a great time playing with this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you do uh, find something really interesting. Also, if uh, if you create some content using um, using Blender, especially something spacey or sciencey, as I as I would call it. Um, let me know. Drop me a line here at the Planetarium, and um, I can uh, we can see if you especially if you're local, we can see about um, reworking it so that we can see how it looks in the Planetarium dome. That would be a lot of fun. So definitely. Get in touch with me on that if you want to give that a try. All right. Again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, click like, click subscribe on our channel and come check us out uh, either in one of the, uh, the matinee children's shows or the um, all-purpose evening uh, programs on Friday nights. Thank you all so much.